pleasant day to everyone. For today's lesson, we will talk about financial statements, tools, and budget together with the managing checking and savings account. For this lesson, you student will be able to identify your financial values, goals, and strategy. Another thing, I'm going to show you some of the personal balance sheet and cash flow statement for you to measure your financial health and progress just as businesses do. And you can also evaluate your financial records necessary for managing your personal finances. And you can outline and work toward achieving your financial goals through budgeting. And for our managing and checking and savings account, you student will be able to list and define the tools of monetary assets management and identify the types of financial services firms that provide those tools. You can also learn how to earn interest and pay no or low fees on your checking accounts. And you can make the best use of benefits of savings account. And in the end of this lesson, you can also explain the importance of placing excess funds in a monetary or money market account. And you can describe electronic money management, including your legal protections, and discuss your personal finances and money management more effectively with your loved ones. In your financial planning process, we have here the five steps. First, we need to be realistic in terms of your financial and personal goals. What does it mean? You cannot have certain goals or you cannot, you cannot have plan if your financial status cannot cover your goal. Mean to say, kapag po hindi posible na mangyari ang iyong goal based on your financial capability, hindi po ito magiging realistic. The second step, you need to evaluate where you are now financially. Are you working? Do you have investment? Are you expecting money from your investment or expecting money from your hard work being an employee? So you need to identify, you need to know what is your financial status came from the income that you can get, came from the income that you may get based on your work or based from your businesses and then for the third step you need to develop a plan to reach your goals if you have goals automatically kailangan mo pong magkaroon ng plano why because yung goal na ito ay hindi mangyayari if you don't have concrete plan how can you reach this and for the fourth step you need to put your plan into action hindi po pwedeng plano lang tayo ng plano na magsi-save tayo or let's say we're going to open an account in a bank or let's say uh, we're going to commit ourselves to the uh, stock markets and so on kung hindi natin ito gagawin. Okay? So, without action, yun, yung goals natin in terms of our financial, hindi po ito magiging posible. And then, for the last step, we need to monitor our plan to stay on track with changing goals and circumstances. Yung plano po natin, time to time, nagbabago po ito, depende po sa sitwasyon. Like for example, you have personal problem that somehow you might use your savings. So, nagbago na naman yung iyong plano. In this sense, okay, you need to keep track on this. Why? Because sooner or later, you need to go back on your track and then pursue your goal continuously even though again you face some circumstances based on this flow chart as you can see these are the inputs these are the true out processing and here we have the output so it's a isa hin po natin for us to achieve our financial goals we need to evaluate we need to assess ourselves first what is our values? What is our attitude? How we do our living in terms of our financial or in terms of our lifestyles? What are the things that we want? What are the things that we cannot live without? What are or who are the people involved in our decision or can help to achieve our financial goals? Uh, in terms of human resources also, materials resources, like for example, uh, you're putting up a small business and where is the money came from? And also, what are the assets that we have? And then, in here, we were going to have a certain efforts to do. Now, ano-ano po yung mga ito? 
in airport, we need to consider how much we earn, what are the expenses that we have, the economic status that we lived in, in advertising also, standard of comparison. We need to compare everything for us to make an airport. In managing airport also, we need to consider our plan in terms on how we spend our money. And also, in terms of our financial plan, we need to take a look at some of the risks that we need to consider doing our efforts. And also, the financial plan for capital accumulation. Now, in our managerial efforts, these are the things that we need to work on. First, the planning. How can we make a decision? How can we implement it? What are the things that we need to do for us to control our financial goals? How can we evaluate things? How can we cope up or adapting if there are some circumstances that we cannot foresee? Through feedback, we can identify what are the things that we need to do more, what are the efforts that we need to execute more. Having those kind of managerial efforts by ourselves, automatically we can achieve whatever the financial goals that we can have. Now, let's talk about the financial statement, a balance sheet, a cash flow statement. So, ito po, itong table na ito, is just a representation of personal income. Okay, so you can have a tabulation or you can have your own table okay, para po makita ninyo kung paano po uh, nagkakaroon ng expending or let's say paano po kayo magkakaroon ng savings. Um, in here, makikita nyo rin po yung black and white, how your money in here using this table, ayan, makikita natin kung saan na pupunta yung ating income and um, we can also foresee no, kung ilan po yung matitira doon sa ating income o doon sa pera na meron tayo based on our expenses. So like for example, here we have the month, you have your income per month and also your budget expenses and some of the balances. And then your balances become your savings. In terms of your financial statement, you can again have a compilation of your personal financial data designing to communicate information on your money matter. You can use often along with other financial data to indicate the financial condition and behavior of your own and also the way your family spend money. The two most useful statements are the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. Now, once we talk about the balance sheet, again, these are the net worth statements that describe you or let's say individual or family financial condition on a specific date. By showing what will be your asset or let's say what are the income or liabilities that you need to pay in a monthly basis, it provides a current status report and includes information on what you own, that you owe, and what the net result should be if you need to pay all your debts or well, let's say you need to pay some of the due date no? okay, from uh, different utilities that we, that we use. Like for example, meron tayong electricity, water, or even yung telecommunication if you have some Wi-Fi in your houses. And through balance sheet also, you can identify what is your financial status. And through balance sheet, you can also identify where are you financially right now. And in terms of your cash flow statement, these are the income and expenses statement list and summarize income and expenses transaction that have taken place over a specific period of time. So, depende na lang yun sa inyo. Uh, like for example, sa bahay, ang, ang kitaan ay let's say every week or every month, you can change the, this kind of table. In cash flow statement, it answered the question, where did your money go? So, by here, we can strategize okay, how can we save or how can we um, manage our expenses. So, saan po ba madalas tayo nagkakaroon ng mga expenses? These are uh, the collaboration or compose of fixed costs, the variable costs, intermittent, and also the discretionary. So, once we talk about fixed, ito po yung mga paulit-ulit na same amount na binabayaran natin. 
natin. So, for example, if you rent a house or a room, so time to time, same amount lang po yung babayaran natin. Or let's say we have some mortgage or car payment or TV and cable. So, for example, uh, you prescribe no, in some cable companies and even the communication. Once we have contract that we need to avail the services, like for example, two years, ayan, uh, kadalasan ito yung mga ginagawa ng mga telecommunication companies na meron tayo. So, like for example, we have the BLTT, the Converge. So, these are the fixed things or the fixed expenses that we may pay or we can pay based on our lifestyle. Next po is what we have the market po. So, time to time to po yung mga expenses na nagbabago. It depends on our consumption. So, these are the electricity, the water, like for example, um, uh, you have your motorcycle, ayan, so time to time, nagpapagas ka, and also your food, and some of your clothes. And in terms of intermittent, these are the expenses that occurs at times only. Ibig sabihin, one-time payment, or let's say, nagbabahit ka, hindi pa ulit-ulit, may hangganan. So, ano-ano po yung mga ito? We have the tuition, you have your insurances, Sooner or later, ayan, time to time, you need to fix some of the area in your house. Talaga na po kapag ka, um, tatagpulan na, ganyan, kailangan natin i-secure na uh, yung roof natin ay hindi matutuluan or let's say, hindi mababasa ng ulan yung bahay natin, mga ganyan. So, these are the expenses na ginagawa natin, not time to time. Okay, meron lang tayong specific time kung kailan natin ito ginagawa. And also, yung car repairs or yung mga motorcycle repairs na kailangan natin i-maintenance, ayan, na hindi din again nagiging fix or hindi rin siya nagiging part ng ating variable cost. And then, we also have discretionary. So, ito po yung mga expenses na kung saan we need to fill ourselves to be rewarded. Why? Because, syempre, tayo ay nagtatrabaho. Diba? Ginagalingan natin araw-araw. So, yung galing na yun, kailangan nito pagkaroon ng rewards para po masalo tayong mamotivate na gawin yung trabaho natin ng mas mabusa. So, like, for example, you treat yourself to go to shop or shopping ka ng mga makeup or shoes or new bag or new cups. And also, and also you can have some gifts, no? your loved ones or let's say uh, every week or let's say um, every year ayan, meron tayong tinatawag na celebration in the house so you can have like food delivery or every sahod ginagawa natin ito now how can you track your expenses so like what I've said kanina you need to identify what type of expenses ninyo paggagamitan yung inyong income so like for example ito uh, by the month of January. So, yung budget lang niya is 15,000. So, paano niya ito madidivide? Okay? Para po, yung kanya pong matitira no, doon sa kanyang income or sa inyong mga income ay magiging part ng inyong saving. So, we have here the date, the types of expenses. Pwede kayo magkaroon ng mga legend dyan by the use of different colors. And then, you can have your description para saan itong uh, expenses na ito, how much, and then magkano na lang yung matitira doon sa ating income once we pay okay, our expenses. Okay, and then, you can also have some, uh, like for example, draft or graph rather, para po ma-identify mo kung gaano ba kalaki yung nakukonsumo na expenses na ito based on your financial capability or financial ability. And then, afterwards, pwede mo pong masummarize yung mga expenses na meron ka per month through pie graph. And then, we also have the financial ratios that can assess your financial strength and progress. And here, the financial ratios are the numerical calculation design to simplify the process of your evaluating from your uh, financial strength or the progress of your financial condition. Having this ratio can serve a lot of tools or let's say yarn stick to develop your savings, your spending, and even if you use some credit card, kaano, daw, kaano lang po yung hangganan nito para po natin gamitin. So, in here, yan, meron tayong iba't ibang klaseng ratio. Una po dyan is what we call the as, asset to debt ratio. So, dito, kinukumpara natin yung ating total asset doon sa ating total liabilities. And then, we also have here the debt service to income ratio. 
Kasi naman po, kinocompare natin yung ating expenditure, okay, annually, based doon sa nagiging gross income natin. Annually also. And then, we also have the debt payment to disposal income ratio. So, dito po, dinidivide po natin yung monthly disposable personal income into monthly debt repayment. So, once we talk about disposable income or disposable personal income, these are the amount of income remaining after we pay taxes or after we pay some withholdings. And then, for the last, we have here the investment asset to total asset ratio. In here, we compare our investment asset value with the net worth of it. Now, how can you reach your goal through budgeting your spending, savings, and also having an action plan? Your financial success is definitely a largely a matter of choice, not a matter of change. Your budget is where you make and implement those choices. Your budget also is your plan for spending and saving. Again, budgeting forces you to consider what is important in your life, what things you want to own, how you want to live, what it will take to do that, and more generally, what you want to achieve in life. In budgeting process, it can give you control over your finances and also it empowers you to achieve your financial goals while simultaneously you can confronting any unforeseen event. In short, budgeting answers the question, what is my spending, savings, and even my or your action plan? Some people do all their budgeting mentally and some of those did not succeed. Why? Because if you did not put this into paper, you cannot go or you cannot do some backtracking. A budget is a paper or electronic documents that you can use to record both plan and actual income and expenditures over a period of time. Your budget represents the major mechanism through which your financial plans are carried out and goals are achieved. The cash flow statement focuses on where have you been financially. The balance sheet shows where you are financially at the current time. And the budget indicates where you want to go in the future. So now, these are the list on how can we reach those goals. First, you need to set your financial goals. In creating and also following a spending plan, has three stages. We have the before, during, and after. Before establishing your budget, take action to set financial goals. Long terms are financial targets or end that an individual or family wants to achieve perhaps more than five years in the future. Such goals provide direction for overall financial planning as well as the shorter term budgeting. And then next, we have here, you need to make a reconciled budget statement or estimate. Before the months begin, you make and reconcile budget estimates of income and expenditure. Here, you can resolve conflicting needs and wants for revising statements as necessary. You can have everything in life, especially this month, even though you might want it. And then, you also need to take a look at your plan cash flows. Before the months begin, your plan, your cash flows, income usually remains somewhat constant month after month. But expenses do rise and fall sharply. As a result, people occasionally complain that they are broke or out of money and sick of budgeting. This challenge can be anticipated by using a cash flow calendar and eliminated with a revolving savings plan. And then next, you need to control your spending. Budget controls are technique to maintain control over personal spending so that plan amounts are not exceeded. They give feedback on whether spending is on target and provide information on overspending or even some errors, emergencies, and exceptions or omissions. And then you need to evaluate budgeting process. In evaluation, it occurs at the end of each budgeting cycle. 
Now, the purpose is to determine whether the earlier step in your budgeting efforts have worked and it gives you data to use for the next budget cycle. You need to review by comparing your actual amount with budgeted amount, evaluating whether your objectives were met, and assessing the success of the overall process as well as your progress towards your short or even long-term goal. And also, you can use some of the software or financial software and planning tools that can make managing your money just for a stop. Now, in here, financial software offers many benefits. Okay, why? Because automatically, you can backtrack your records. Keeping your records in the process of budgeting, record keeping, and the process of recording the source and amount of your money earned and spent, recording the estimated and actual amount for road income and expenditures helps you to monitor your money flow. You can also keep track of your income and expenses in the only way to collect sufficient information to evaluate how close you are to your achieving your financial objectives. Now, what is monetary asset management? Monetary asset or cash management encompasses how you can handle of your monetary asset, including your cash on hand, checking accounts, saving accounts, and certificate of deposit, and even the money market accounts. The goal is to maximize interest earnings and to minimize fees while keeping banks safe and readily available for living expenses, emergencies, and saving the investment opportunities. Successful monetary asset management allow you to earn interest on your money while maintaining reasonable liquidity and safety. Liquidity refers to the speed and ease with which an asset can be converted to cash. Your funds are safe when they are free from financial risk. Now, in here we have the four types of banking account. So it depends on your goal, what are the things that you need to be suited okay, in your financial goal. So first po is we have the so-called checking account. In checking account at a depository institutions that can allow you to write checks against amount you have on deposit. Check transfer your deposited fund to other people or organization. Checking account also can be accessed by using a dev or check card in automated teller machine or what we call the ATM or a point of sale or the POS terminal at a retail store. When you use your debit card funds are instantaneously removed from your account. They are given to you as cash or sent electronically to your account owned by any other person or organization you designated to receive the funds. You also have an access to your checking account via telephone or on your own gadgets when you are used to check your accounts. You can also see there the records, the date, the check number, the amount of the check, and to whom it has written into the check register you receive when you obtain your blank check. Also, subtract the amount of the check from your previous balance in the account. Deposit into your account are added as they occur as well. This section examines the type of checking accounts available and checking account charges, fees, and even the penalties. For the second banking account is what we have, savings. The second tool of monetary asset management is, again, the savings account. A saving accounts provide you with a readily accessible source of emergency cash and temporary holding place for funds and excess of those needed for daily living expenses. The fund on deposit in the savings accounts are considered time deposit rather than demand deposit. Time deposits are savings that are expected to remain on deposit in financial institution for an extended period. Some time deposits are fixed time deposit, which specify a period that the savings must be left on deposit such as 6 months or 3 years, certificate of deposit or the CVs fit this description. And then we also have the money market accounts. Most people use checking and saving accounts as the cornerstone of their monetary asset management efforts. 
a money market account in any of the variety of interest earning accounts that pays relatively high interest rates compared with regular savings accounts and offer some limited check, writing privileges, a money market account, provide both checking and saving tools at a higher interest rate. Such accounts are offered by banks, savings bank, credit union, stock brokerage firms, financial services companies, and mutual funds. The types of money market accounts are super now accounts, money market deposit accounts, money market mutual funds, and the asset management accounts. And for the last, we have here the Certificate of Deposit. Certificate of Deposit is a saving account that holds a fixed amount of money for a fixed period of time. Example, for 6 months, 1 year, or 5 years, and in exchange. The issuing bank pay interest when you cash in or redeem your CDs or Certificate of Deposit. You receive the money you originally invested plus any interest that your bank will give you. And now we have here the Money Market Mutual Fund or the MMMF. This is a money market account and mutual fund investment company. It fools the cash of thousands of investors and earn a relatively safe and high return by buying debts with very short-term maturity. Interest is calculated daily on investors can withdraw funds at any time. Money market mutual funds typically pay the highest rate of return that can be earned on a daily basis by small investors. Now, we also have here the asset management account. In here, it is a multiple purpose, a coordinated package that rather most of the customer's monetary asset management vehicles into a unified account and reports them in a single monthly statement. Included in this package might be transactions in a money market mutual fund and in checking, credit card, debit card, loan, and stock brokerage account, also known as a central asset account. They are offered through depository institutions, stock brokerage firms, financial services company, and mutual funds. Such an accounts enable you to conduct all of your financial businesses with one institution. In this table, we can see the list of providers and what are the things that they are sell. The financial service industry compromise companies that provide monetary asset management and other services. The firms in this industry provide checking, savings, and money market accounts. Quite often, they also provide credit, insurance, investment, and financial planning services. These firms include depository institutions such as bank and credit union, stock brokerage firm, mutual fund, financial services companies, and even the insurance company. And now, the providers are what we call depository institutions. In our depository institution, these are the organizations licensed to take deposit and make loans. They all can offer some form of government accounts insurance on their customers' deposits and are government regulated. They offer a wide range of financial services. Example of depository institutions are the commercial banks, the saving banks, the credit union, all through each is a distinctive type of institution. People often call them all simply banks. We also have the other financial services providers. First is what we have, the stock brokerage firm. They are licensed financial institutions that specialize in selling and buying stock, bonds, and other investments. Such firms provide advice and assistance to investors and earn commission based on the buy and sell orders that they process for their clients. Stock brokerage firms typically offer money market mutual fund accounts into which clients may place money while waiting to make investment. And also, we have here the insurance company. Insurance companies provide property, liability, health, life, and other insurance products. Many offer monetary asset services such as money market account. Some also offer vehicle loans and credit cards. 
Now, we also have electronic money management. It refers to money that exists in the banking computer system that may be used to facilitate electronic transaction. All through its value is backed by fiat, currency, and may therefore be exchanged into physical, tangible form. Electronic money is primarily used for electronic transaction due to the sheer convenience of this methodology. In electronic money management also, we use plastic in our monetary asset management. These are those things. First is the ATM cards that can allow you to withdraw your money from or transfer money among your checking and saving accounts at an automatic teller machine. You must use a personal identification number or what they call the PIN to use the card. And also, we have the stored value card. This contains a magnetic strip or barcode that encrypts the amount of money stored via the card. They are much like a mini checking account you can use wherever the card is accepted. A gift card is also an example of a stored value card. So, our cards given for refunds and rebates. And also, we have electronic benefits transfer or the EBT. This card used by the government to pay personal and provide social security and other government benefits. They are much like a stored value card, but the holder does not load the card. The payer does so. And for the last, we have here the credit card. In credit card, it allows you to purchase or obtain cash with credit card from the bank or retailer that issued the cards. These are that that must be paid back often with interest. Next, we have here the psychology of money management. The common cause of tension in personal relationship is conflict over money. Some people seem unable to work together to perform even the fundamental task of managing money such as reconciling the checking account, creating a workable budget, and paying bills on time. Often, one of the partners brings a great deal of debt to a relationship. Other couples get into financial trouble because they use credit too often. Mutual trust in money matters can be developed and must be to have happy interpersonal relationships and achieve financial success. First, we need to manage money and making financial decisions are different how, how this thing so. Managing money includes such tasks as handling the checkbook, overseeing the budget, and doing the household shopping. The couple should agree on who will carry out this day-to-day chores and then carry through on their responsibilities. Financial experts recommended that each person in the relationship keep some money of his or her own. For doer earning couples, this can be accomplished by setting up three checking accounts. So what are those things? A recreational account for each individual or two accounts, a third joint account. Then clearly specify the budget categories related to each account. Each partner can feel that he or she has access to money that the other partner does not control. This feeling of autonomy encourages independence and self-control in relationship rather than dependency on the other person. While managing family money is a major task, decision-making is where disagreements typically arise. Share decision-making in the best model when setting goals, when contemplating any major expense such as buying automobiles and housing, and when conferring on key topics such as insurance, state planning, and investment and long-term financial plans. One useful rule is to give each other a boot power over any decision to borrow. Next, people ascribe strong emotions to money. People often ascribe a number of emotions to money, including freedom, trust, self-esteem, guilt, indifference, and they, security, comfort, power, and control. They bring with them the patterns, beliefs, and attitudes that were prevalent in their family of origin. It is also essential to recognize the importance of these emotions. Many people want to hold on on their physical autonomy as long as possible, and they may be embarrassed to inquire about how much others, even loved ones, spend, earn, or owe. And then third, how to talk about your financial 
matters. Discussion about money matters are not always easy. Some people who are entirely rational about other issues are unpredictable or even careless in money matters. Adults need to accept that honest differences may exist among people and respect these values. The following ideas will help you discuss money with more confidence and condor. First, get to know yourself. The first step in learning to talk with others about financial matters is to understand your own approach to management. You need to consider the emotion described earlier to help get you started. It is constructive to discuss any differences in how you view yourself as compared with how your partners views you. Second, you need to focus on your commonalities. Successful communication about money requires that the effort be aimed toward agreeing on a common goal and reaching the consensus of opinion without substantially compromising the views of others. Third, learn to manage financial disagreement. Give all your family members time to express their views when discussing financial matters. Each also needs to listen to what others are saying and feeling. If talking proves too difficult, each person separately write down his or her concern. Perfecting notes, ideas, and concern can be shared. You can also schedule a time and place for financial talk. Decide on agenda items and leave other conflicts outside the door. When necessary, agree to disagree or postpone difficult decisions until the later time. But do so consciously and not simply out of procrastination. Or number four, use positive I. The statements, messages focusing on I describe the behavior in question. The feeling you experience because of the behavior and any tangible effects on you. For example, a spouse might say, I feel upset when you use credit card because I do not know where you will find the money to pay the bills at the end of the month. I messages says three things. What the behavior? I feel the feeling because the reason using I messages helps build a stronger relationship because they tell the other person, I trust you to decide what change in your behavior is necessary. Aware of I statement that begin with, I need you to. You statements are blaming statements such as you always or you never. And if you don't, I will. These statements have a high probability of being condescending to other people of making them feel guilty and of implying that their needs and wants are not important as yours. And for the last, be honest and talk regularly. Achieving consensus requires that each person be honest when talking about money matters. It further is demand that couples regularly talk about finances. Be prepared to compromise. When you make decisions together, act on them. Focus attention on both current financial activities and issues as well as your long-term financial planning. Thank you for listening.